What is going on guys? It's the Mad Dragon. We are back in Rugby 20 today. This is a little series I do where I catch up on some of the rugby news while I play a game in the background. Uh, today's news is going to be all about the Ireland-Italy match coming up. This is going to be the replay of the Six Nations that was cancelled earlier in the year. So we're going to chuck on a game of Ireland versus Italy. I'm going to play as Italy, mix it up a bit. Uh, this game is still super easy, <laughs> so I'd be expecting to win, but uh, you never know. All right, let's get this game underway. So, first of all, if you guys have checked out my other video of who will win the Six Nations, if you haven't, go check that video out. It's basically me breaking down how I think the, the system's going to work for this game that's starting up from the Six Nations again. Who I think is going to win. I've got a big belief it's going to be between England or Ireland, and I think Ireland are in with a good shout. Um, so I've had a look at the teams today. Teams got released earlier this week. Uh, Ireland did theirs on Wednesday, and I think Italy did theirs yesterday. It came out, so I've got the teams up in front of me here, so I can have a quick look at them. So I'll chuck on screen this Ireland team. Now, Ireland, if you look in my other video, I definitely recommend going and watch that, because you might understand a little bit more about this, that I won't go into huge breakdown. But Ireland are going to be looking for huge point scoring in this game. They basically need to beat Italy by more than England are going to beat Italy uh, next week, which... I know for all those Italy fans, they're going to believe they, they, they could still win. They won't. <laughs> I don't think England are going to let a Six Nations go by being beaten by Italy. And I know Ireland are going to want to push as hard as they can to put themselves in with the best chance of being able to win that Six Nations by doing even better. So let's have a look at this Ireland team. Uh, there are some big, big names. First thing that I would point out in this team is the bench that I have noticed. Ireland have only got three backs on their bench. They have absolutely loaded this with forwards, which says to me Ireland are going to be playing the big ruck, the big scrum game. Italy have been well known for being the power team. They never really had a lot of good handlers, good power runners, good sprinters, really. They get chased down very easily. So they, most of their game tactic is get into a ruck, get into a maul, just drive it over the line. That tends to be how they score tries. Ireland obviously know. This is how they're going to do it. So they've gone power loaded in these forwards. Um, five forwards. They're going to be replacing a lot of that starting eight um, throughout the match. Maybe 40 minutes, 50 minutes, 60 minutes. They're just going to keep that team fresh. Really try and break down that Italian scrum. Um, the back line is, again, huge. Uh, the first point of note is going to be Hugo Keenan, who's going to be starting on the left wing, which is a nice break for him. He gets to get into that international jersey. A jersey, by the way, which looks spectacular. Uh, I haven't been able to do a breakdown of that. This come around too quickly, but I am liking the look of the uh, the island jersey. It's looking very, very nice. But Hugo Keenan gets to start on left wing, which means that Jacob Stockdale has moved to fullback at 15. Uh, they're obviously giving this lad a shout. I don't know how long he will stay on the pitch for. Uh, they do have uh, Robbie Henshaw on the bench, who I believe either plays centre or he also plays fullback. He's quite sort of in and out. So I've got a feeling that Hugo Keenan might play the first half and then they might move Jacob Stockdale back to his left wing and chuck Robbie Henshaw on at fullback. Or they might just try and keep Keenan in through the whole game and just take Stockdale off for Henshaw. Um, but the back line for Ireland is going to be really interesting. They have the big hitters. You've got your Connor Murrays, your Johnny Sextons, Bundyaki, Gary Ringrose, Andrew Conway. This is the... The team we have seen for the longest time in Ireland, they know this works. They play a fast game. Um, Jordan Lama, not actually sure what's happened to Jordan Lama. Um, he's he sort of gone off the picture. I don't know if he's got an injury at the minute, but um, Stockdale at fullback, he knows how to play fullback. He will have a good game. So looking at the Ireland backs on the bench, which will be an interesting talking point. So another new name for me anyway, maybe not for some of you guys, but for me definitely, uh, Jameson Gibson Park who used to play in New Zealand. He is, uh, he's been ruled that he's allowed to play for Ireland. I'm not sure if that's uh, Irish heritage or because he currently plays in Ireland now. Uh, but I do believe he was born in New Zealand. Um, but looks like a strong lad, very, very fit lad. Plays at scrum half. Um, I think he will probably come on for Conor Murray not too long into the game. I think if Ireland have a very dominant first half, I can see them taking Conor Murray off, wanting to keep him fresh for France next week and giving Jameson a good a good shout. So it's nice to see uh, some new blood coming in. Ireland are obviously trying to swap up some of the positions. Um, Ross Byrne, who's definitely coming up in the world now for Ireland, playing at fly half. Again, I think they'll do a very similar thing. Johnny Sexton will play a solid first half. 
If they're leading by enough, they'll take Johnny Sexton off. If they're not, they'll probably keep him on to 60 minutes. Ross Byrne, though, solid kicker. Uh, very, very accurate kicker. Not quite as much range as some other big kickers in the world of rugby, but definitely got a good percentage kicking. And then, like I said, Robbie Henshaw. The big thing to note about the backs for the Ireland team that I'm noticing is that there is one man in this back three replacements who can either play uh, centre or fullback. There are no replacement wingers, and Robbie Henshaw is one replacement centre. So they are very hopeful they do not lose a winger or a centre <laughs> or Jacob Stockdale at fullback. Obviously, Robbie Henshaw could slide in at some of those positions, and between Stockdale being able to play on the wing and Robbie Henshaw playing fullback or a centre, they do technically have all those positions covered, but all that takes is for two of those men to go out, and they do not have a good replacement there. Um, it would probably have to see the replacement scrum half maybe move on to the wing, which I don't know if he's comfortable with. Uh, it could mean maybe putting Robbie Henshaw on the wing if needed. I don't know how that'll work out for them. They're playing a big game where they've gone very forward dominant. They're probably going to try and nick a few tries from the backs, but ultimately are going to play a big forwards game. Um, I think that could come back to bite them uh, if they end up losing players in the back row or take a couple of injuries or people getting yellow carded. There are no replacements in that in that back line so they've obviously loaded the front they want to play the power game that's how they're going to go for tries but overall a very strong looking Ireland team moving on to the Italy team uh they come out with some big names for the the Italian team again of course as they always seem to be in the uh, in the Six Nations are going to be bottom of the the table pretty much no matter what really um I don't see them beating Ireland I don't see them beating England um and they will end up where they usually are down in six which is a shame they've played well this year, actually, um, I think one of the big facets for them doing very well has been the drop of Sergio Parise, who I know is a legend of the game, but to me has lost his touch over the last few years. And obviously he's now been sort of rendered out. Um, there's a couple of big names that are filling in those positions now. Sebastian Negri has done really well so far. Um, Bram Stain is big, big. Uh, Jackler, big, big in turnovers. And then Jake Pelledri, who's just like a rhino with the ball. <laughs> he just charges through. That 6 7 8 is very, very strong. Um, and they are keeping Italy afloat, really, especially in terms of defense and uh, being able to win the rucks. Um, their front three are uh, probably the least capped front three I've seen for quite a while. They still got quite a few caps in there, but obviously they lost a couple of big names in the last recent years Castro Giovanni is no longer with them um and a couple of the locks so there's a little bit less experience in that forward eight but it's nice that they are trying out some of the new blood some of the younger boys and they are showing off very nicely um the back line for Italy uh it's actually looking relatively strong uh Bellini who did not have a good world cup for anyone who uh, knew that I was doing the fantasy league for the world cup Bellini lost me a whole bunch of points uh, <laughs> he played terrible in the world cup but in the six nations has done very well uh, and I've been quite impressed with Bellini um Padovani is actually quite a good standout player um in this Italy team uh he's one of those sort of names that you feel if he was in another team he would probably flourish a little bit better, but he does seem to be a bit of a, lay, a lone man out there in the uh, on the wing. And then Jaden Haywood, who also very, very good fullback. Um, very, very strong runner. He's probably one of the quickest fullbacks they've had in a long, long time. Um, so going to be interesting to see how they get on there. Um, at number 10, they've had a change. I don't know what's happened to um, Tommaso Alan. Um, I don't know if he's injured. I haven't been following the Italian rugby overly closely. Um, so I don't know what's going on in that world. Um, but they've got Paolo Garbisi. I believe it's pronounced. I have no idea <laughs> who this guy is. I have no way of uh, knowing how good he is. But he could be a, a big switch up for them. Uh, put, in a, put in a name that I, I'm not a, a particularly knowledgeable on. But uh, could catch Ireland off guard if he plays pretty well. Okay, looking at the Italian subs bench, uh, there is an unbelievable bench here. This is something I don't think I've ever seen <laughs> in a rugby side before. Um, Italy obviously got to see that Ireland released their team first um, and have seen that Ireland have put out an immensely heavy forward pack um, with, of course, there being an awful lot of forwards on the bench, probably more than they'd usually put out. Um, Italy's return 
to this idea is to just put even more, even more forwards on <laughs> out on the uh, out on the bench. So much so that there is only two replacements who aren't forwards. One of which is a scrum half, and one of which is a centre. They have no replacement fly half, no replacement wingers, and no replacement fullback. So Italy, <laughs> Italy have loaded up, absolutely loaded up on this forward pack idea. So I would not be expecting Italy to be trying to pass this wide ever in this game to try and score tries. Um, there's a couple of interesting names in here. Um, David Sisi is an interesting player. Um, used to play at flanker and has recently moved to lock. So there's a bit of versatility there that they can move to either position. Uh, Johan Meyer is um, another flanker who I believe can also play number eight. And then um, Maxime... Mbanda, I believe it's pronounced. I'm not 100% sure on that one. Um, is another flanker who can also play number eight. So between four of their players, they've actually got four, five, six, seven, and eight covered at any given point. And then, of course, with the uh, the big boys up the front there to replace in that front row. Um, they are loading up on this. So I'm going to be expecting a lot of malls, a lot of rucks, everything they ever call should be going to scrums. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just expecting Italy to uh, try and run rampant in that scrum area, but the island scrum that's going to be coming out is going to be huge. Um, Callum Braley, uh, again, not another big name for me. Um, going to be probably coming on at scrum half later on in the game. Um, and then Federico Mori, again, apologies to any of my Italian <laughs> viewers for uh, pronunciations of names. Um, centre, believe he can play inside centre. Don't believe he plays a lot of outside centre uh, from what I've looked up in the past half hour before <laughs> filming this video. Um, but yeah, Italy have played a very interesting game going for no replacement backs. They obviously believe it's going to be a big forward game. Ireland, I think, are going to take this one. I think it's got to be an Ireland win here. I think they've got too strong of a back line with no one to be replaced in that Italian line. All that takes is a winger to be injured, the fullback to be injured, and they basically are just chucking people on out of position. I've got to believe Ireland are going to win this, and I think in order for them to want to win the Six Nations, they know they have to win this, and not just by a bit. They know they've got to win by a lot. Um, I would be expecting Ireland to front up with the big forwards, but I'd be expecting a lot of their tries coming down from the wings, um, maybe seeing John Sexton squeeze in a couple um, and then using the uh, the new boys coming in. I'm pretty sure this uh, Jameson Gibson Park's going to want to get his name out there, get in the replace of the uh, the Conor Murray position there. I don't see Conor Murray staying on for the full game anyway. Um, I'll hopefully see some of the island bench players coming on. Uh, but that's just a quick rundown of the teams, guys. Uh, I'm going to put my call on this, I'm going to say Ireland to win this and heftily. Um, I think Ireland are going to win somewhere between 30 and 35 points is going to be my guess at the game. Uh, you can drop down in the comments what you think the uh, the final score will be. I think this is going to be an Ireland domination. I think Italy have gone too heavy with how many forwards they've put in and haven't left themselves enough versatility out on the wings. I think they're going to get just run round and kicked over the top and just sort of taken apart. I don't think they've gone down the correct channel here for playing Ireland. But let me know what you guys think in the comments. Are you looking forward to having the Six Nations back? Is it going to bring joy to your life to have some international <laughs> rugby back on the scene? I can't wait for it. Uh, if you haven't checked out my other video of who you think will win the Six Nations video, definitely go check that out as well, where I break down a little bit more how Ireland are more likely to win this Six Nations than England. I had a really good time making that video, but I hope you've all enjoyed this video today, guys. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.